All right, now we're going to talk about this ballistics calculator in this video here. Uh, I guess first let me go back to video three of the series where I talked about drag on the arrow shaft are here. Okay, so our coefficient of drag, there's uh, from a, the Japanese study that I found on this, which I felt was very, very good for estimating the drag of the shaft, had a couple different values depending on the condition that the shaft is in. But this velocity here is the instant velocity of the arrow that's going down range. So what I had done is I had chose a small distance x to remain where the velocity was to remain constant and then solved in steps what the velocity drop would be. So we'll look at that here in the uh, calculator. So the method part is what's what's actually going on here. Now we always start from initial velocity and we can input those values over here on this table, we've got our input values. But in here, we have our initial conditions, and we'll solve in steps. So the distance I chose was a one-foot increment. We can see that there's very little change in velocity in one-foot distance. So you end up getting a pretty consistent estimation of what that velocity is probably going to look like downrange. What I considered for this ballistics calculator was about every variable you could consider. So we've got fletching height angle, length, the number of fletchings, the current air density, arrow diameter, weight of the shaft, frontal area of the shaft, frontal area of the vein. So I've considered those differently. This is where our drag coefficients come in. The drag coefficients here are something very important to consider. I am calculating a Reynolds number for those that are a little bit more experienced in, in uh, physics. You might know what that is. Uh, the reasons for that is this coefficient of drag is variable depending on the Reynolds number as well as the attack angle of the shaft. And so that basically means if your shaft is not coming out straight, your coefficient of drag is not the same as it would if it was straight. So if you torque your bow and your shaft comes out a little sideways, until that shaft is able to stabilize, it's going to it's going to have more drag than it would if it come out straight. Again, I do have air density here for different altitudes, and these are uh, standard densities, basically lookup table type stuff. So, and then I, stall, I solved this in steps. Well, I built this to solve in steps. So for every foot distance, it assumes that the last velocity was constant for a one foot distance and then resolves for a new velocity. And you can see the velocity change here over time. Time to target then, because we know our velocity, you know, essentially over that time interval, we can solve time to target. We can get vertical inches of drop, your performance downrange of the arrow shaft. And that's what I've been using to compare all of these numbers to here. Excuse me. I've, I've simplified the method here rather than having to look at this, uh, you know, giant table of numbers to something a little bit more readable. So all the red boxed areas are variables that you change. So this would be your initial velocity of shaft. And then down here, we've got arrow weight and grains, outside diameter, fletching height, fletching angle, fletching length, fletching numbers, headwind speed, fletching drag coefficient. That's something I'm going to try to investigate a little bit more of what those are really looking like. Uh, crosswind speed, shaft length, uh, and this degree between fletchings depends on four fletch, three fletch, etc. We've got some other additional details here down here for broadhead details, and this comes into our Poncelet equation and penetration estimation over here that I've got as well. Another thing is a uh, departure angle, the arrow. We can use that to find a zero at a particular distance. We can also change our drag coefficient based on our initial conditions. So it would be 1.5 if, if we have a stiff enough shaft and if our arrow comes out straight. So that's the bow is tuned well and the shooter does not initiate torque on the bow. You're going to have a drag coefficient of 1.5. If you have a shaft that's on a weaker side, or if you're shooting a traditional bow or something that has a non-shoot through riser or a limited adjustments as far as cam tuning in that nature, the shaft lacks much more to create a consistent arrow flight. And so by their nature have a higher drag of 2.6. And that was actually found in the Japanese study with uh, the recurve archers. Uh, also here we've got uh, you know drag coefficient for laminar flow. A lot of these arrows, if they are flying well tuned out of the bow and are a stiff enough shaft. They're going to fly at this zero attack angle, 1.5 coefficient of drag here. So, but a well, uh, you know, a poorly tuned shaft, if it comes out at something like three degrees, could have up to, you know, three degree 
coefficient of drag. So that is going to significantly reduce your downrange velocity. If we started at 1.5, and we can change that to, let's just say it was 3. Maybe it stabilized at some point. You know, uh, so from 246 feet per second at 60 yards up to... Two hundred or two hundred and sixty-one. So it's it's it, it, quite an incredible difference using a well-tuned shaft. Excuse me, well-tuned shaft, and whether that shaft is stiff enough to absorb the energy from your bow, such that it doesn't have a uh, tremendous oscillation of flex coming off the bow. When I talk about the ballistics calculator on my channel, this is what I'm talking about. Obviously, these are a, a lot of numbers here that I've explained, um, and it's probably a pretty poor video at this point <laughs> trying to read these numbers. One thing I wanted to note here, arrow spine stiffness, I think, is probably one of the Im most important variables um, that we should be considering from all the math and testing that I've done, especially with broadheads and impact at target. A stiff enough shaft is, is vitally important. This stuff exists out there to illustrate some of these things that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to try to do more testing myself as well. But this is just a broad overview of what this calculator can do here and what it's capable of. And this is what I did in that video to find my sight tape. I found a zero reference here. And just creeping our way up here. We're just trying to get our vertical travel, the arrow, to, meet, to be zero at 60 yards. Yeah, we'll call that close enough. From this, then I knew I was shooting at a 15-yard range, so I was looking to be 17 inches high of my aiming point. Now, I was shooting from my knees to make sure that I sh was shooting the bow level and the bow and the arrow could climb naturally. I don't know if Archer's Advantage does it, but I know Precision Cut, you can take velocities at distance like you would measure out of a lab radar to find a sight tape. I'm going to play with that a little bit next. Uh, I do have a subscription to... To them as well so i'll play with those numbers a little bit and see how well they match my real world numbers that'll also let me know how consistent these are uh, i might reach out to someone local in the area here that has a lab radar so we can do a lot more testing on this to try to verify how close these velocity numbers are again from what i've researched personally um, looking up other videos with lab radar that give me enough information to to see how close these are uh, it's been usually within five feet per second so uh, I felt that's accurate enough to continue with the analysis. Uh, I appreciate uh, everyone's support for this. If you've got more questions on the ballistics calculator here that I'm building, again, I'm going to try to release this to everyone. I just got to figure out a good way to do that to where it's set up to where the numbers are easy to understand and input your values. I'm working on the wind tunnel. I'll be having a lot of fletching testing coming up. So look forward to that. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you know, leave them down below and we'll go from here. All right. So until next time.